Well, for the last 27 years, I've been working with people who really live at the edge of their life. And that might be through illness or through some trauma or tragedy that's happened to them, or maybe the consequences of past abuse in childhood, whether that's emotional, physical, sexual abuse that might have happened. And it's often when we encounter these traumas and tragedies in life that we stumble upon those deeper questions about our own existence of who am I? What am I doing on the planet? Am I living the life I came here to live? If not, why not? And what am I going to do about it? I came into this work really through my own experience. I'd had a lot of um, traumas in my early childhood in growing up with a very complex and challenging brother who told me before he was 10 that he knew he had to take his own life by the time he was 30. Uh, when I was 11 I grew 9 inches in one year and that deranged the bone growth in my legs so I spent three years in hospital having surgery to my legs, 12 major uh, operations to, so that I could walk again. Um, I was raped, I got into drugs, my brother attempted suicide many times before he succeeded and not long after Brendan died uh, I moved to America with my husband and two small children to do a yoga and meditation teacher training course and I thought my husband had gone for a long walk one day but he'd actually returned to Australia so it was another thing on top of everything else uh, and then not long after that I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia and when I was diagnosed my very first reaction was relief because up until then I'd felt that a lot of my life had been a real struggle I had a very deep, deep pattern within myself of I have to earn my right to exist. Uh, I have to measure up in some impossible way to an expectation that I held for myself. And it was really leukaemia that gave me the opportunity of addressing some of these patterns that we all develop within ourselves according to our history. And part of the time when I was ill, uh, I spent in a little monastery outside of Assisi in Italy in a cave where St Francis used to uh, retreat to for prayer and meditation. And it was really in that cave that my whole life became unstuck. Uh, because in our family uh, we cope. No matter what's going on we just cope. You just pick yourself up and you keep on going. And I maintained a facade to show to the world that everything was okay, even though on the inside I didn't feel like that at all. And so leukaemia really became the catalyst by which I began to liberate myself some, from some of these patterns that held, held me uh, stuck in these very uh, damaging, self-judgmental, critical uh, patterns that really infiltrated into every corner of my life. Um, obviously I didn't die, uh, although I absolutely expected to. I was not one of these people who said I can cure myself or I'm not going to die of this disease. I absolutely expected to die. I wrote letters for my children. Um, I said goodbye to my parents. I had had those long conversations about unresolved issues from the past. and. I felt like in many ways I'd packed up my whole life into a little suitcase all ready for the big trip. And then the plane got cancelled and I went into remission. And I was then faced with, well, how much do you unpack the suitcase? How much do you live as if you're really going to be here? And after a while I realised that actually everyone lives with a great deal of precariousness in their life. They just don't know it. And so there's a whole bunch of people who I'm sure will relate to this that we know that life can change in a moment. It can change with a phone call, it can change in the most unexpected ways. And life is never the same again. And there is no going back to who we were before. There is a going forward into perhaps a much richer experience of our own life. But that really is only discovered through work and through actively embracing and engaging with whatever the challenges are that we have in our life. And since then, you know, after about three months of being in remission, my mother said to me, have you thought of working, dear? And that came as a huge shock to me because 
I was told I was only in a remission and that it wouldn't last. And so to start up a, a career or to get a job just seemed ludicrous when I was all still packed up ready for this trip that I was sure that I was going to be embarking upon. And I very reluctantly went into naturopathic practice because I was already trained as a naturopath, a herbalist, a homeopath, a yoga and meditation teacher, which is why it had been so downright embarrassing to have cancer when I was meant to know about health. And I'd had huge amounts of discipline where I'd done, you know, I'd been meditating since I was 17. I'd done two 30-day fasts, two 40-day fasts. I'd done a 60-day fast. So discipline was never my issue. Compassion for myself was a major issue. And so uh, in many ways I felt that I'm, uh, I'm beyond help. So I'll go into naturopathic practice and I'll just do what I can to be of service to other people and forget about myself. And within the first two weeks, the first woman with breast cancer came in. The day after the first person with AIDS came in, both of them were told that they wouldn't see Christmas, which is what I'd been told 15 months previously. And I felt like I'd met fellow travellers in the transit lounge of their own lives. And my question to people has always been, what is it that stands in the way of you being at peace? And sometimes that was a physical symptom. And so I would use herbs and homeopathy and manipulating the diet and supplements and meditation, whatever it might be, to assist with whatever the physical symptoms that the person might be experiencing. And then, now what is it that stands in the way of you being at peace? And our conversations got ever deeper uh, into I haven't lived the life I came here to live. I don't know who I am. My relationships are fractured. Uh, I live with this facade as I had uh, between me and the world and no one really knows who I am. And so uh, these were the conversations that I really relished because they were so pertinent and relevant to my own life story. And since then I've been privileged to share those conversations with over 80,000 people uh, through our residential programs and workshops and seminars and so on. And through that medium have found that really we're all on the same journey. We're all on the journey into either moving away from our essential nature or moving towards it. And that's what my work is about now, is assisting people to address those deeper questions of their own existence and to engage actively with the challenges that they have so that they can discover the peace that passes all understanding.